now these are the general problems we face with uh, our history optional like you said a huge syllabus and also there is there are many things to remember facts and figures and years and also some misconception like uh, after reading this much also it may not give good score but there is possibility of getting scores also this year first rank came from history optional so that's why first one huge syllabus if we see the huge syllabus here what we have to think is the syllabus is given in a detailed manner that is why it is appearing very large suppose if i show you this one now this is the syllabus one okay paper one syllabus if you see only these headings it appears a small only but once you give the detailed things then it is becoming very vast advantage is it is very easy to have proper checklist for example if we take uh, sources sources these are very clearly given now in your preparation if you study archaeological sources then that is done for your preparation once you have done that then your preparation is done and after that literary sources then foreign accounts now huge syllabus now in that detailed segregation is given that is why it is becoming very vast but advantage of this is our history is a static one there is nothing to fear about current developments only sometimes uh, one or two issues related to ancient history some developments may take place but still without knowing even those things also you can write very well answers but if you know current affairs that becomes additional advantage but most of our syllabus is very static nothing to worry about current also that is why once you know the sub topics if you have clear idea about how many sub topics are there then once you prepare this sub topic your preparation is done for all then likewise you can finish all the sub topics and you can feel that one particular topic is 100% done 100% done it may take some time initially to finish all the topics but once you prepare all the topics then you can get the confidence that you have done 100% suppose if you take current affairs there is only one line in our prelims important national and international developments but what are those important developments we never know upsc never defines throughout year also we study current affairs still we never feel that we have done 100% but with respect to history that is not the case so that is the first advantage of history sub topic topics are given sub topics also clearly defined once you finish all the sub topics you can get the feel that 100% of your preparation is done and also one more advantage of history is you have lot of resources we may have some kind of feeling that there are many resources but at least advantage is we have resources suppose some subjects may not have sufficient resources then you have to search in many places but in case of history we have many resources and it is only our choice what we want to study once we pick up those sources then we can we have clearly defined syllabus also and we have a lot of sources also then prepare one by one finish the syllabus and you can feel that 100% of our syllabus is done that is the advantage of giving detailed syllabus so if you think on these lines history becomes easy next static and easy to maintain the checklist so once you have done then you know how
how much percentage of our syllabus is done well, you may be at zero now but after one month maybe 20 percent is done after next month uh, 30 percent is done after fourth month you may feel 70 percent 80 percent of your syllabus is done so you have that clarity that how much percentage of your syllabus is done and how much is remaining left so that is why UPSC has given complete list of subtopics also that is why it appears very big but advantage is is very easy to maintain the checklist and easy to track our progress online student Russia Ukraine war if you take do you have any idea what are the reasons for Russia Ukraine war okay so NATO one thing you brought hmm Hmm. Okay. What was the fight? What is the reason why they fought against each other? Okay. During after Second World War. Have you heard this one? Cold War? So during the Cold War time period, entire world got divided into two parts. Online. In current affairs, we study something is going on between Russia and Ukraine. But the real reasons, something is there in history, hidden in history. If we don't know that history, so general study students are also required to know that history. So earlier during Cold War, ideologically, USSR was communist country and the Western European countries were following capitalism. So there was ideological war between two, two groups. In that context only, India and some other countries formed other group called non-alignment movement because we don't want to enter into this ideological battle because we just got independence. After very long struggle, we got independence. Again, why to enter into another struggle? So it is time to develop. That is in that context, NAM. So now you can connect uh, how NAM created. So here, in that context, the capitalist countries created security pact that is NATO. It continued till 1991. Here, the Communists also created Warsaw Pact, but after 1991, communist states disintegrated. Warsaw Pact also dissolved. Now Russia says there is no requirement of NATO after 1991 because it was the institution of Cold War. Now Cold War is done. Now why to continue it? So if you are continuing means you are against me. So that is the emotion with respect to NATO for Russia. Now that is the grievance of Russia towards NATO. Now instead of dissolving NATO, NATO expanded further after 1991. So that means already Russia had grievances that you are not doing anything or you are not dissolving NATO. Instead of dissolving, if you expand further, that means you are completely against me. Now at one point, Ukraine was offered to join in NATO. But culturally and historically, Russia and Ukraine, they were very close. And in our history, there was war called Crimean War. Out of Crimean mud, Italian unification emerged. There was a question in history optional. So when Crimea War took place in 1850s, just before our 1857 revolt, in India, 1857 revolt. So before that, there was war in Crimean Peninsula, where Turkey, Russia, Western European countries, they all fought. Out of that particular battle and war, Italian unification emerged. So already Ukraine war was there in history since many centuries. Now it is a continuation of that struggle. Now if you have 
command over old history then you can understand the present uh, current affairs also so now if question comes uh, your analysis is far better than general studies analysis so this is one area where our history optional will help our knowledge will help and when it comes to ethics now in ethics you can give lot of examples like truth non violence buddhism jainism mahatma gandhi hitler so extreme views you can give on one hand violence on the other hand peace ethics also you can quote lot of examples like abraham lincoln so you can give remembering these people for general study students one problem but for optional studies it will come automatically so naturally optional student will remember many examples that is another advantage now internal security in internal security also how india faced threats since ancient times our borders how our borders were insecure and how our rulers created some war uh, battles or boundaries are safe now we can easily guess in the northwestern and himalayas what type of security and in the indian version if we are not good in security in indian version we had to become colony of british empire because moguls did not focus on army uh, navy they were very good in continental army but when it comes to naval moguls did not uh, have that technology also they did not focus as a result britishers and europeans they were very good in navy and they could completely capture indian subcontinent so this shows that if we are not advanced in technology our country will face the threat now this time our cyber security is very crucial because now threat is coming from in a different way but consequence will be same so once they capture now we become slaves and we had to uh, behave whatever the invader will ask us to do that also the so many incidents we can take from our history not only from indian history but old history also for example america is very great today technologically wise also political systems wise also internationally also it is still commanding great command one of the reasons is because of its geography because on both sides it is separated from europe and asia by huge ocean pacific ocean on the one side atlantic ocean on the other side now the kind of security threats it faced is different the security threat we face from northwestern and indian ocean is different now you can correlate throughout our history so when it comes to france and germany they are continental when it comes to united kingdom they are separated by ocean so united kingdom is more secure comparing with uh, continental france and germany that kind of connection you can think and we can utilize that analysis in internal security as well how terrorism is spreading how india is facing threat from different boundaries of india now in one essay now essay we need not to tell many stories we can create essay is all about narration of the theme and that narration while writing your main answers in history optional you will develop that narration in main answer writing itself you will develop that and that skill you can use in essay this is another advantage and overall these are the skills overall you can develop analytical capability because you will connect various issues in logical way you will connect lot of dots and it requires and also it will generate skills to handle interview also for example now once if you are going to interview today now this is these are the current issues now they will ask questions on this only they will ask what is the real issue between china and So now all these factors will convince us to take to pursue history optional if we are really interested. If there is no interest, we cannot continue. That is secondary. 
but if we have interest and if we see in this light then our resolve becomes very strong we can focus on history optional and also we can utilize this knowledge in different areas so as of now what books you are studying for ancient no nee. ah. okay okay which is source you have to study hmm how many months ago you started august okay first time first time you started in august only earlier from exam perspective you started in august onwards okay hmm true true so that is uh, ancient when it comes to medieval ah uh, okay hmm okay Hmm. How to make notes? Hmm. 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 Modern India. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. True, true. One advantage of Bipin Chandra is uh, it gives like a narration. Very interesting. We can easily comprehend and we can visualize what is happening in a freedom struggle. Uh, old history. Any attempt to have you made to study? Hmm. Okay. Normal law way. ఆన్లైన్ మేడం నార్మల్ లోవి సజెస్టెడ్ అండ్ జైన్ అండ్ మాథూర్ యూ యూ జస్ట్ బాట్ యూ డిడ్ నాట్ రీడ్ ఎనీథింగ్ ఎన్సిఆర్టి సంథింగ్ ఎగ్జాక్ట్లీ ట్రూ ట్రూ ఓకే సో నా వీ విల్ సీ దట్ బుక్ లిస్ట్ ఆల్సో ఓకే now as of now convinced where history optional can be used in which areas we can use and in interview also now the on the current issues if they ask can you tell about china taiwan crisis if you are a good uh, optional student then you can bring that uh, till 19 uh, since 1949 so the problem is not existing today it is there in since 1949 then the way you communicate with board also completely different and they will ask some more questions also and you will be able to understand and you will be able to analyze very well and in case of russia ukraine also same kind of issue you can uh, analyze so that is how suppose if there is any communal tension while you are going for interview in some part of india maybe some communal tension may come so interview they may ask why communal tensions are coming then if you are a history option student you will try to trace the origin to british divide and rule policy so when they came there was no such concept called communalism but once they came they started highlighting the differences because of those policies now you can bring the father of communal communal electorate so those people also some facts and figures you will bring when you are optional student naturally you will remember so if you analyze in that fashion you will definitely impress the interview board also for that one advantage of history option is some questions are repeated from previous years i will show how questions are being repeated 
for example i have taken from 2021 only now we are discussing how upsc repeats previous year questions and how can we add to take the advantage of this feature here i highlighted from 2021 only from 2021 why is the reign of kaljis known as kalji revolution this is the question in 2021 last mains now in 2006 you can see the kalji revolution in short form they have asked so repetition now we are analyzing how many questions repeated in last year so next this year again next month is going to come we will see how many questions they will repeat this year can you read this question you read this question 2021 question that is the question this year now you see in 2011 right read the question so they have just changed the other wording and they asked the same concept and in this answer also you will write in the conclusion he is the real founder of delhi sultanate so that conclusion becoming the question in the next year so that was 2011 in 2021 now here you have to see in 20 2006 they repeated 2011 they repeated some questions are repeated from 1990s also so that's why better to at least study for 30 years now can you read this question 21 question so stages of indian feudalism now in 2012 can you read this question so they asked changes in the indian feudalism that changes became stages of indian feudalism so if you study changes those are the stages also so now that is how they are repeating the topic and the question also in a different wording online students is that clear how upsc repeating questions gone zoom gone next can you read this question 2021 question now can you see what are the dimensions in this question they are asking so war wars and battles administration and also art and culture so they are asking all the dimensions of cholas while you are studying cholas you will study the contribution of cholas so in that different headings like how militarily they conquered different areas what is the administration and what is the contribution to art and culture now you 1996 question can you read this so same question in this answer also you are going to write these dimensions only now 98 same thing 2007 so this is this dimension so now the you see how upsc is repeating so once you are themes are ready now i will give this can you read this line upsc in syllabus itself they have highlighted cholas you have to study about administration village economy and society and indian feudalism 
so while studying the subheadings of the syllabus itself you will cover the syllabus that is why our syllabus became very lengthy but in fact uh, it is advantage for us we need not to worry about suppose if they simply leave cholas then we don't know what dimensions we have to read in cholas suppose if simply they say 750 to 1200 we never know what developments happened in 17 750 to 1200 so upsc simplified us by giving the sub dimensions of that particular topic so it is our advantage in fact just you need to study the administration of cholas so whatever words they have given we study in detail and we will make the notes and we will keep it ready and apart from that we will study some more elements like the political angle and art and culture angle of cholas and in the next so likewise cultural traditions in india 750 to 1200 so in that the in subheadings we will cover cholas art and culture so likewise upsc simplified by giving different dimensions within the main topic now we have seen how upsc is asking questions now can you read this question 21 this year question now 20, 2002 question same thing here they particularly mention about kautilya in 2002 even though kautilya is not there we our answer would definitely contain kautilya ardha shastra so nature of mauryan state characterize the nature of mauryan state repetition now you see in just one year all these are 2021 20, only Now, how many questions are repeated? Now, here, can you read this? English utilitarian thinking impact India. In 1992, can you see? Utilitarian ideas. Utilitarian. so could you see same theme how did english utilitarian thinking impact india in 92 same question they have given so they have specifically mentioned how utilitarian try to solve the problem of land revenue now in this answer you are going to bring that land revenue issue so repetition in 2021 only you see how many questions are repeated and can you read this Two thousand nineteen missionaries. So they are asking about Western education and Christian missionaries. In this also, we will write about uh, Christian missionaries and other effects also. Repetition. Now, can you read this? Okay, now you read this three B. So it indirectly it is the role of Sardar Vallabh Bhai Patel. So same question. Now fourteen and twenty one. Now in fact these double quotation marks you can use in this answer as introduction or in the conclusions. so by highlighting all the things you can conclude by saying that he accomplished a silent revolution without a even a drop of blood so that introduction or conclusion will give very good weightage now you can use previous year questions statements like introduction and conclusions also same thing with great skill and masterful diplomacy and using both persuasion and pressure vallabhai patel succeeded in integrating hundreds of princely states same question repeated can you see this question 2021 so 
so it is about napoleon's continental system can you read this same thing okay economic war or continental system principles same now can you see this the chartist movement so it is about chartist movement failed now you read this 2004 question so after failure also it has achieved its success this also chartist movement failed to achieve its stated objective but succeeded in seeding the idea of representative democracy same theme different wording how many questions in 2021 2018 so same thing now in this one you will include after 1991 also 1946 means since its birth so you are going to write all these and some more after 91 also so repetition now this is how previous year questions if you answer them if you just uh, go through all the previous year questions many of them are going to be repeated now these questions you will select and you will write best answers and some of the other questions which are not repeated this year but how they are repeated i have given local self government under cholas in 1992 now in 2004 also again the cholas are said to have established a strong well organized self government at local level repeated and 2015 how could the local self government under cholas adjust with their centralized same thing now in 18 also doubtless it was not a free state it was any rate reflect upon nature of local self government same theme continuously repeating same is the case with mansabdari system A repetition and battle of plassey that decided the fate of bengal was won clive through intrigue the battle of plassey was not a great battle but a great betrayal same thing so would that's why in that answer writing also i asked you to give some of the synonyms you were there right so if you just divide the question divide the dimension and if you have many synonyms you will come to know like features characteristics elements all are so upsc also now you can see how upsc also changing the wording and giving the same question that is why we have to think with various synonyms our answer will become very uh, accurate and more demand oriented now here also the tribal and peasant rebellion laid the foundation of the revolt of 1857 in gs it was asked you can see the 1857 uprising was the culmination of recurrent big small local rebellions and had occurred in the preceding 100 years same thing in a different wording now in this answer you can use this particular statement as introduction or conclusion so now this is how upsc repeats many such questions you will see in world history this is world history cold war repeated and same cold war okay so this is how upsc repeats many questions if you follow 30 years questions since 1990 it will be very helpful for us paper 1 we will first we will see the question paper this is 2021 question paper now in the paper 1 in the section a part first question is about map and here instruction is 30 words on each of them you just need to write only 30 words first challenge is 
identifying the paleolithic site if you identify the paleolithic site then you just need to write 30 words only they give small space in the main answer writing so you have to just fill that space 30 words means you are going to write just bullet points only you cannot write uh, grammar because if you put grammar 30 words will be gone so that's why only bullet points for example when it comes to uh, mohanjodara you can say like uh, it is uh, the largest settlement and also located on the indus river uh, great bath is located city divided into a uh, citadel and lower town bronze dancing girl was discovered so like that most important points you can put and in 30 words you will try to convey as many points as possible similarly mesolithic site and what is the importance that is the section a here this section you cannot uh, skip you have to answer one section a question one is done now when it comes to questions here in the paper one question one and question five are compulsory question one is map question fifth one is five questions are given you have to write all a b c d e all questions should be written so question one and question five are compulsory now from the rest of the questions you have to select three questions and three questions also you should select at least one from each section that means from section b you can choose either two or one if you choose one from section b you have to choose two questions from section a if you choose one from section a you have to choose two more from section b so that means in section a you will write definitely two questions in section b also definitely two questions only one question you can select from either a or b now this part up to early medieval period section a comes after early medieval period section b comes or simply you can say ancient india part a medieval india part b now we will see the book these are the three books a there are many books for history now first one is with respect to syllabus we got some idea there is nothing to fear about the uh, syllabus only they are very detailed one just we put the tick mark once it is done now second part is what sources we have to study now first we have to start with ncrt's these two are new ncrt's and this is old ncrt this is the level one now while studying also the strategy to study is first we will study this then we have to write main answers we have to take some questions and whatever knowledge we get from these books we try to answer in the and whatever evidence we get from these books we will try to incorporate if we can utilize 100 percent of this material most of our issue with respect to ancient india is done but problem comes in some of the topics we may not be able to comprehend further and there are some questions for which material is not available in these books but for most of the questions but complete understanding of ancient india can be done through these books to ncrt's online students to ncrt old ncrt's this is sixth one this is twelfth one and this old ncrt this becomes very foundation for our ancient India. Even GS students also should read this. It will not leave. UPSC will not leave general study students also. These books are same. Now when it comes to answer writing, when it comes to history optional, we have to practice a lot how to utilize the content we study from this. That is where difference comes from general study students and uh, optional students. Like I said, evidence should be given. Only if you give more evidence, your answer becomes an optional answer nothing much difference simple now this is the next level dnja 
and BA history study material. From this level onwards, we try to select some of the topics. This one is end to end, every page we have to read. But when it comes to next level sources, we can select some of the issues which are not covered by those books. That is how we have to see. Otherwise, if we start reading from page to page every source, then our time will not be sufficient and some we will not be able to utilize the material also. So first level is done. Now whatever is missing from there, we have to select from this. Now next level was now so far we have covered five books. Whatever is missed so far, now we will go to next level. So this is Upinder Singh and this is Romila Tapar. So stage by stage we have to read. Otherwise, if you start taking all these books in one go, then our ancient industry itself will not complete in one year. So one by one, step by step. Now this book, still, if you feel want to read more, then these are the other important books which are useful for our examination. A.L. Basham and Jawaharlal Nehru, Discovery of India. Some of the content, some of the chapters we can utilize. So here I tried to list out all the important books for ancient India. It doesn't mean you have to read every book from page to page. So first level is these books. It lay the foundation. And main challenge is whether we are able to utilize this content in our answer writing or not. There are many students by reading up to this level also, they are able to write good quality answers. So it is all about how writing skills you have. If you get command over writing skills, then you can use with a limited source also, you will be able to write. Then if you are not satisfied, then go to the next level. Still not satisfied, go to some of the level, then not satisfied, then only. But these are the various books which we can use. At least selectively, some of the contents we can use. We need not to worry about every page, which is not covered by other things we can read from it. Next, when it comes to paper, part B, paper one. Again, NCRT's foundation, two new NCRT's, this is seventh and this is twelfth. So in case of ancient India, sixth one, this is seventh one. And in case of ancient India, part 1 of 12th standard, this is part 2 of 11th, uh, 12th standard. And this medieval India, Sati, uh, Satish Chandra. Then this is the foundation. Again, same principle. We will study end to end. And we will study, we will write many main questions on these topics. Then still, if we are not able to comprehend and if we feel want to study more, then a BA IGNO material. Selectively, we can take some of the topics which were not covered by previous material. For example, nowadays, in medieval India, some industry level questions are coming, population level questions are coming. In the basic NCRT books, uh, this much detail is not given. Some books do not have that content at all. That is why we were forced to go to next level. Then after that, we can use these books, same Satish Chandra only. This crux of these two books is given in the World NCRT. The crux of these two is given in World NCRT. So for more details, we can study. Level by level, we have to study. Again, we should not confuse that we have to read every book. No, it is not about that. We have to choose very selectively. And uh, this one, it gives very good format of story. In case of medieval India, uh, generally in these things, a story is not clearly given, but these things, political history story is given very well. But we will not be able to utilize that content in exam. That is why you have to see, studying for understanding is different, writing the content for examination is different. Here one, uh, one volume is containing some information about uh, historiography. For example, how we know about Delhi Sultanates. There are some writers they have written about uh, Delhi Sultanates. During Iltutmesh, some historians have written about him. 
during Mughal, Ma Muhammad bin Tughlaq, some historians have written about that. Those details are not in this. UPSC is asking those questions like Al Biruni, how he described India. Nijami, how he described uh, the political setup during his lifetime. So what are the sources of uh, um, Tughlaq dynasty and Kalji dynasty? So those writers, we get information from these books. In these books, we won't have that. That is why wherever lacunas are there, we have to fill those gaps with these books. So the purpose of giving these books is not to force you to read every book. Okay, whatever is left in the previous books, we have to identify and which is suitable for our exam. Then still some more, one or two questions are coming beyond this level also. For those, we can answer from this book. This is Cambridge history, economic history. Like uh, nowadays questions are being asked on economic angle. What type of economic system? So in that previous uh, material is not containing that detailed, this book will contain that. And this is S. Chand book. This is additional part. This you need not to worry, but it is also one of the source. Nowadays, some prelims questions, which are not available in any of these, are available in this. They are asking like uh, some of the important writers, what uh, books they have written. In prelims especially, this book is the one. Okay, now you should go level by level. You need not to worry about every book. First, uh, having the base here, then writing answers. Still some of the answers which we feel we cannot write, then going to the next level. Then still going to the next level for a story purpose. Then beyond that, for one or two questions only, we will depend on this. And for prelims, uh, we will go through this particular. Because for general study students, very difficult. For optional students also, after reading these many books also, some questions are not being able to answer. Some questions are available because they have given full of facts. So that's why somewhere those questions can be answered from this list of facts. If you study directly, you will not understand this book. If you study previous books, once you get the story, then in that story you can use these fa particular facts. Now, this is the paper two syllabus, online stop books. NCRT itself will give the base for you. And next level is we have to immediately test uh, mains answers. Then we have to test ourselves whether we are able to, whatever content we grasp from NCRT is, are we able to utilize in mains answer writing or not. If we are not able to utilize NCRT answer itself, then what is the purpose of going to next level books? If we learn how to use it, then we can go to next level book, we will use the content again. So stage by stage. Now this is paper two syllabus, part A, modern India, part B, old history. Same principle, question one and five are compulsory. And in part A, you can choose two questions from, two more questions from modern India or two more questions from world history. So wherever you are, if you are more comfortable, you will write three questions on this, two questions here. If you are more comfortable here, three questions here, two questions here. So this is part A and part B. Now when it comes to books, again, NCRT, new NCRT and old NCRT, we will try to write the answers. If we are not satisfied and if we want more content, then we will go to this. This is S. Chand. So in medieval part also one book, uh, prelims related book, S. Chand, same S. Chand book. This is very important with respect to modern India because they are giving quotations, quotation type of questions, comment question, and we get many comments from this book. So B.L. Grover. And India's struggle for independence, for a narration. And also, this part from 1857 onwards, uh, this book is good. And the content also starts from 1857. But before 1857, what happened, this book is not having. That's why we have to depend on this. Now, this book is the combination of both, uh, from emergence of British Empire till independence. 
that's why from placy to partition here there is no placy here you will get details about the placy so that's why nowadays because of the difference of between here these two can will not contain full material this book is nowadays becoming popular because in one go every uh, entire modern india is covered in one book so again first is this one we have to utilize the content if you are not able to content and we have some time then again we have to go to this and again still not satisfied we can use some contents from this also this is sumit sarkar it is particularly related to labor agriculture so that level of uh, history history from below subaltern approach but we should not read uh, end to end only selectively and our modern history contains post independence also so this is ncert post independence we have to read this then india since independence up to 1964 up to jawaharlal nehru period is our syllabus so we have to use that content till that point and if you read complete book you can use this knowledge in polity also economy also in gs23 papers but this knowledge will help you and still if you want some more details and this gives a lot of details so you can read apart after doing everything but at this level if you read this book and this book whatever question come from post independence you will be able to write but this book is only for additional if you want more content and if you want more understanding because in interview in sa in other papers in ethics paper if you have more content and more examples from history you can use that knowledge very well for that purpose only we have to go at this level otherwise at this level itself you can write be better answers here problem is not reading more books main challenge is how to utilize the content even though we read one book but are we able to utilize 100% or not that is very important aspect with respect to main sam again ncert is so in every section we are base is ncert only because it gives very simple language and also what is relevant for our exam once it is done then ncert is these two ncert is 12th standard arjun dev this book is arjun dev and this is uh, 12th standard contemporary world politics so this will give some information and this will give next level of information but when it comes to world history up to this level is not sufficient you have to go to this level this is l mukherjee two books are there this is up to 1815 this is from 1815 in this we get uh, french revolution and this is after french revolution we get information this is given in simple language story format it is like bipin chandra version of modern india it will be very interesting to read still there are many other sources also you can selectively you can whatever is missing so far you can collect that information from other books jain and madur this book is very good in terms of our syllabus because they have given syllabus wise uh, the structure is very good so you can use this also whatever so far is missing those portions uh, you can cover and this one is good for 20th century history for example after first world war so first world war then inter world war second world war cold war united nations all these things are very good in this book but before world war no content here we have to depend on this source or we have to depend on this source so that's why here 
struck is uh, the sources are scattered but you should be very careful in starting taking the sources so first you should read this you will get some idea then write the answers you will get idea then go to this we will get some idea write the answers then step by step we have to increase the understanding then we have to handle now still even some more books also there some toppers followed some of these books not end to end but for few few portions wherever they feel it is important for example this one david meshan concise history of modern europe history of the modern world by ranjan chakrabarti and europe since napoleon david thompson these are books but once you start reading these books from end to end it will take lot of time my purpose here is to show you that there are many sources for world history wherever it is required we can use some of these chapters and we can utilize in our answer but here itself you can answer very well up to this level itself you can answer very well and this will give complete idea about world history and this will provide very good base and this is fundamental so this is how while choosing the sources also you should go step by step now this is how if you can follow it will be good first read the syllabus then read and analyze previous year questions then start with ncert level suppose if you are starting with ancient india start with ncert level then prepare notes according to that once preparing then immediately start writing answers generally students are hesitant to write the answers always feeling that we do not have sufficient content so we will go after the books we will never use the content whatever we have also whatever content we accumulated at this level we will try to answer immediately then we will come to know what how much is relevant for our exam how much we are able to grasp how much we are able to utilize then take the standard books one by one then continue preparing the notes from those books then again continue practice answer writing so up to this this is continuous process ncert main answer writing standard books answer writing so again when it comes to revision ncert revision answer writing standard book revision writing in this process if you can prepare entire notes of your own then before exam you will not have time to read these books just you will have your own notes to prepare so that is the one which you have to concentrate so that is about theory part when it comes to maps in the process you have to collect at least 400 to 500 sites like paleolithic some sites will come neolithic mesolithic harappan like that if you collect many sites around 400 to 500 sites will come and in our notes we should contain 50 to 60 words how many words we require there 30 words so we are preparing 60 words so double the words even if we forget 50% we will write 50% so 30 words we require and practice map pointing is very important to prepare maps we have to utilize upinder singh material in upinder singh maps are given very well here you will see this is the paleolithic sites map and you can see don't worry about every every thing is given there we will select some of them and we have to Uh, write 60 words and we have to practice for example here luni valley here you can see bimbetka here you can see atiram pakam okay now you see this is near chennai this is paleolithic site do you see this near chennai one here they have given one paleolithic site so if you prepare in that way so near chennai what are the paleolithic sites and they will give that pointing one and they say paleolithic now write about atrampakam 
30 words done and in madhya pradesh they will give bimbetka and they will ask paleolithic site we have to write about paleolithic so likewise and also here they are not accurate we have to prepare separately with the google maps accurately to pinpoint on the maps but for source what type of paleo paleolithic sites are there we get from upendra singh map this is one and these are mesolithic sites here you can see this cluster in belan valley and here neolithic sites here some neolithic sites here in the northwestern part mehargad anjira here some of the sites and here in belan valley some sites and here in allahabad region in belan valley region some more sites this is in karnataka andhra region these are the maps from upinder singh we have ncert notes also we have ncert level maps also some upinder singh maps also we will merge everything and we would collect around 400 to 500 sites for every stage then we will write 60 words 70 words then we will revise often then we can handle very well and these are the things which you can use in answer also for example question is about neolithic then you can give you a map then in the south india some of the map names you can give and in the northwest some of the map names you can give so if you can connect these maps in answer also your answer weightage will increase quality of answer will increase and always have the map of world map like now it is about entire world history we are studying so where is north india uh, where is north america uh, where is england where is france where is germany because in french after french revolution this french revolution have impact on entire europe unless you have the command over map we cannot easily guess how it affected italian unification how it affected germany unification how how it affected uh, england relations so now how england now it could colonize north america now american revolution happened and it severed the ties that is why when they in 1783 this part of british empire became independent they left this colony that is why they started focusing on this colony now because of this the impact of american revolution american war of independence had direct impact on india they lost one empire and they started focusing on other, other empire in 1784 there was an uh, act what is that act no battle of bakhtari 1764 regulating act regulating act 1773 this is pitts india act so board of control was formed so now administration wise also they started uh, focusing more on that is why after this they started de defeating tipu sultan also tipu sultan is having relations with france that's why they defeated him and they conquered mysore region then maratha region conquered so likewise gradually entire indian subcontinent went into the hands of british so in 1784 this impact this one you should be able to so always have the world map in mind so this is about okay so now we have seen history vast syllabus we get the answer and we have seen how we can use the history knowledge in different parts we have to give the evidence if we collect more evidence our map pointing also done if we focus on map 50 marks and more importantly suppose in theory 50% of the score is very high score sometimes you may get 55% also 55% also in case of theory but when it comes to map out of 50 if you are having good command in map you can score up to 35 marks also because they give 2.5 mark and they give 2 marks out of 
2.5 and sometimes 2.5 mark also they will give that is how if you put more map mar markings correctly up to 35 marks also you can get then 35 marks means how much percentage 70 percent so in theory if you get 55 percent that is very great but if only in map uh, you have the chances of becoming 70 also still if you can make out of 20 20 right then you get up to 40 marks also so map is the one which gives high score also and if you neglect it will pull down it's like now we are sacrificing 35 marks then in theory you have to work very hard to reach that level to compensate that score so evidence wise and moreover if we put more effort on this here also we can score more because we give evidence so our quality of answer also will increase so both are interrelated so this is how we have to understand UPSC uh, history optional once history optional books wise also now you have seen I have given you the list of all the books different people may prefer different books it is not necessary that you should follow only those books that is why confusion comes what books are required for example some students might read Ranjan Chakrabarti very well end to end because they might feel that that kind of uh, the organization is very well suited for them but when it comes to some students that book is not sufficient that book will not give that feel so they will prefer Jain and Mathur because it gives a syllabus wise we get some idea that okay this syllabus is done this syllabus is done so you may prefer Jain and Mathur it doesn't mean everyone should follow it and others may not follow Jain and Mathur so it depends on the students connectivity with that book also but NCRT this level this will help you and NCRTs are fundamental most of the answers you can answer from this level only challenge is how well we will use the content so it is not about uh, this book is not having the sufficient content challenge is whatever content is there we are not using it so we have to focus on how to use that so that is how many words you require for maximum 250 words so 250 words this book is containing but only sometimes we feel that connectivity is not there we need we want to read more books so that is very good that reading habit is very good but always we should see how much time we are giving how much result we are getting step by step we go then I can simply say with respect to books reading suppose this ancient India medieval India modern India and world history suppose if you say start with NCRTs you will get some kind of base similarly some kind of base now we will try to answer from this base itself and if we feel not sufficient you take next level of books and increase the base first you should finish all the parts generally what happens we take ancient India we will go this way and we will sacrifice these parts that should not happen still not sufficient we can increase more base so we should not go vertically in one particular section only first we should horizontally go in every section then one by one here not sufficient we will take some more books here not sufficient some more books here not sufficient some more books so likewise we should go then only we can use time resource also and we can use whatever we studied here very well and it will not create much burden also and revision is more important if we read more books our revision capability will go down because we have to write more notes notebooks then if we do not revise whatever we studied so far it go waste so that's why this is how you have to handle books wise so syllabus you got idea even though it is vast nothing to worry in case of map also we have seen evidence is important with respect to books this is the approach we follow
okay so here uh, in our program also we are going to start like uh, paper one mentorship wise i will give questions every day and in the uh, weekend we will discuss all those questions okay so that one suppose for next two months we can focus on one paper like paper one section a and section b so online students is it audible so this program we are going to announce for 5000 paper one we will complete in next two months and we will give questions also in the weekend i will discuss those questions and in the process we will read how to read the books and how to make the notes also we will take some books write the note ma notes making and we will try to practice answers so we will do map pointing also in this process okay so that is how we will handle systematically so this is about history optional